So, um, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, wherever you are actually connecting from, uh, welcome to today's webinar on developing leadership skills, uh, for EAT teaching and teacher association. So my name is Steve Job. Uh, I'll be your host today. Um, I'm here today with uh, Linda Ross and, uh, Gary Motram, and, uh, we'll be looking at, um, a series of presentation around, uh, leadership and, you know, what, uh, you know, what skills, you know, are actually essential, what leadership skills are actually essential for ELT teaching and teacher association. So I will just pass the floor to, to Linda to say a bit about, uh, the project and, and then in introduce the participants. Over to you, Linda. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'd like to just give a short introduction before the presenters start. Uh, I'm Linda Ruas, a consultant with British Council in Sub-Saharan Africa. And this webinar is the high point and the end point of a six month course with 24 teachers called Future Leaders of Elters. Uh, we had participants from five countries, um, Nigeria, Sudan, Senegal, South Africa, and Ethiopia. And I'm very happy to say that representatives from four of these countries should be presenting here today. We started, um, these are the topics that they're going to present on, and these are the objectives of our webinar. We started by developing their own leadership skills with a view to increasing visibility and leading their respective teacher associations. But we soon saw how all these topics we were looking at apply just as much to ELT classes as to leadership of teacher associations. In fact, most of these are life skills and they apply to everything, which makes them even more useful to teach in class as well as work on for ourselves. The group selected topics in pairs, often working with someone from a different country. And they all wrote great articles about their own topics. Uh, please see our publication for more information about all of these topics. We're gonna to be sharing a QR code at the end. And I think um, Steve is gonna share in the chat. So um, without further ado, let's start. Um, we have seven five to six minute presentations. Um, while the presenters are posting, please, any questions that you have or any comments on any of the presentations, please post them in the chat and we should have time for questions and answers. So I'd like to start with Blessing um, on motivation. Over to you, Blessing. Okay, thank you so much. Linda, and thank you everybody for being here today. I'm happy to share uh, about the topic motivation. And I've worked with um, um, I've worked with my colleague from Ethiopia, Marcos, on this topic, and it's been a very rewarding experience sharing from our various contexts. Thank you very much. So, what is motivation? You know, as simple as it is, it just means. Um, stimulating and encouraging individuals, you know, to bring out the best in them, to see improvement in them. And today we're going to be looking at how to motivate young learners, how to motivate teenagers, and also how to motivate teachers in school and in teaching, um, in teachers' association. Next slide, please. Yes. So how do we motivate young learners? So in my experience in teaching young learners over the years, I've come to realize that you should create a positive environment for these young learners. Your classroom has to be very attractive. You need to have um, colorful displays, captivating displays, you know. Another thing is communication. You need to engage these learners you need to talk to them, give them opportunities to talk, to speak, to exchange ideas with you. Another way is to also create an avenue for positive reinforcement. And for me, I usually use um, audiovisuals. 
um, a lot in helping to reinforce topics that have been taught. So in this way, I'm also incorporating technology in my classroom. So if I have taught my young learners about transportation and maybe I've told them to bring some toys like their cars, their toy cars, their toy trucks, and I can now extend it by incorporating audio visuals that help rhymes like the wheels on the bus go round and round and all of that to reinforce my topic. So learning should not just be within the four walls of a classroom when working with young learners. We should extend your learning outside. Like the picture here, we are outside. It's an outdoor activity. I have the jigsaw puzzles and they're trying to fix all these puzzles to make up three letter words. So this is what a typical young learner's classroom should look like. It should be very engaging and motivating. Thank you very much. And I also like to hear from you in the chat box, how you have been able to motivate your learners, but uh, we'll be taking that at the end of this presentation. Next slide, please. Okay, talking about motivating teenagers, this is um, a class from Ethiopia. Marcus shared this um, classroom, his classroom from Ethiopia. Now, in teaching teenagers, we need to encourage them to take charge of their learning. And that is what learner autonomy is all about. These teenagers have ideas in them. So, for example, in your creative um, writing classroom, you could tell them to pick up topics that they will be interested in learning or discussing about. So they could, they could discuss about those topics in groups, then write about those topics. And um, a teacher who teaches uh, teenagers must be very enthusiastic. You know, you must show passion because these children, these teenagers, they are full of energy. They are full of vibes. So you need to... Sorry, blessing. I accidentally muted you. Could you unmute yourself? Sorry, I thought I heard some okay. noise in the background. Okay, I noticed that. So, can I repeat what I've said again? Let's do that. Go on. Sure. Okay. So I was talking about motivating teenagers. So and I was saying that you need to encourage these teenagers to take charge of their learning, you know, come up with their own ideas. And as a teacher, you have to be very enthusiastic, very passionate, because these teenagers are very energetic. They are full of vibes. They are up and doing. So you have to show great enthusiasm for your work. Then you should also provide support. Teenagers need counseling. They need someone to talk to. They need someone with a listening ear. So as a class teacher, you are also a leader in the classroom, in the school setting. So you should be able to provide the support to your students. Also, bringing up relevant lessons. So you just like to talk about topics that are that are pertaining to their growth, their development, talking about dressing, talking about movies. So we have to be very creative in bringing out topics for our teenagers. So any topic we are going to be presenting to them must be very relevant to their lives. Now, you could also extend um, their learning by bringing in, um, guests not just the teacher doing the work at every point, can invite guests to come talk to them about specific areas that are, that will um, interest your learners. So when they hear from, from other people, they also feel excited and they have a, a broad view about these topics. Next slide, please. Okay, so I think the next slide, you are talking about motivating teachers motivating teachers in schools and in teacher association. So what I have here, you can, you can motivate teachers by providing them with professional development opportunities, like what we are doing right now. So schools and teachers associations should encourage this, should do more of this, you know, um, extend the, the learning as well of the teachers, not just the, the, the learners in the school right now. Teachers also need to develop their learning and acquire much knowledge. Um, also, we could come up with award ceremonies for teachers. Like what I have here, I got this award in 2021 as the, as the tech um, teacher of the year in a school 
where I worked, you know, so this is the certificate of appreciation that was given to me. And it was really inspiring me because it made me go all out to even advance myself in the area of technology. And that was how I got my MCE, that's Microsoft Certification you know, as an educator. So things like this can um, can actually motivate teachers. So in our different schools and associations, we should try to do all this. Creating a positive school culture. So we should create a happy environment, a very happy environment in our schools where teachers are happy to come to work. They look forward to coming to work. And even in our teachers' associations, we should make it, you know, a bit bubbling and exciting. So not just the professional development courses right now. We can look at other fun activities. We can come up with um, maybe football competitions for teachers. We can we can bring up a field trip, have excursions to recreational centers, you know, do things that will really motivate these teachers, make them happy, make them feel proud of their profession. Then lastly here I have provide health care. You know, the HMO that um, health management organizations, schools can liaise with um with all these hospitals and healthcare centers to provide um, insurance schemes for their teachers. I know some schools do this, but a lot of schools do not do it yet. So we can have you know um, teachers go to hospitals and have free healthcare for themselves and for their families. And even for teachers associations, you can have um, frequent um, healthcare where they have maybe um, BP tests, our blood pressure um, checks, blood sugar checks, and all of that. It shows that we, we care about the well-being of our teachers. So these are some of the ways that we can motivate the learners in the school, the teachers in the school, and also teachers in teachers' associations. And I don't know if we have anything in the chat box um, yeah, well, we'll from come anyone. On to the We'll come on to the questions right. after this blessing. We need to move on. Right. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. Thank that. You. Thank you. We're going to fly from Nigeria to Senegal now. And our next presenter is Tijan on emotional intelligence. Over to you, Tijan. Okay. Thank you very much, Binda, for giving the floor. Thank you, everybody. And... I greet you all by the greatest way of greetings. Um, this is a pleasure for me to be part of the, the webinar as a presenter. So my name is Tijan and my family name is Nur. I am from Senegal, Dakar, and my teacher association is ATES. So I have worked with Foja. Uh, she's not around. So the title of our topic is Emotional Intelligence, which is the capacity of managing both your emotions and understand the emotion of your fellows. So if you look at this poster, we have sticks there. And if you see some sticks, so you, you should know that there is what is happiness first. If you see or you check it again, there is sadness and there is anger. anger. There is also fear or something like that. So if you look at it, you should try to identify uh, to know what this one is, uh, feel or what this one does not feel. So you should try to identify if you are in your class as a teacher, you should know the student who is who feel great or not, the student who is in trouble, and you just try to know his or her feelings in order to uh, make her in the or him in the classroom. Uh, this is good in an association, a teacher association also, because whenever we meet, it is important to know those who feel happy and that, and how to try to work by knowing the emotion uh, of the others. Yeah, that's why it's so important to talk about this topic because without uh, emotional intelligence, 
to do your job correctly, sometimes uh, you can lack. Next slide. So why emotional intelligence? That's what I have just thought. Emotional intelligence is good in a, a classroom because you have to feel something. For example, if you have a student who uh, does not feel well, you should try to feel something about and care about the kid. And it is vice versa. If the kids, they know that you really feel something about them, you take care of them. So if you get ill or if you also do not um, feel well, the student also, they have feelings toward you. In these situations, we can work and make things better. Because if you have this kind of link, you feel and then you you care about the others, you understand them, really to work, uh, that will be easier. As far as the teacher association also is concerned, this is better in order to move or to, uh, to work better. Next slide. So if you look at uh, this poster, we have uh, emotional intelligence, which is divided into some, how can I say, um, main, some main elements like the self-regulation, um, like self-awareness. If you do not aware uh, yourself to gain something, that will be very difficult for you. Self-awareness is very important in working in a team, in a classroom, and you have to be self-regulation also is very important because it is part of things and it strengthens things if you want to uh, perform well. And as far as motivation uh, is concerned, as my sister Blessing had just talked about it, motivation also is very important. If somebody does something, you try to, mo you try to motivate him or her uh, this one can do better tomorrow. For example, in a teacher association, when a teacher or teachers, they try to do all their best to do something, uh, for the association, it's better to give them certificate as uh, even here, they're going to do. These uh, kind of things motivates, motivate, I'm sorry, people in order to better work and do something else. We have to motivate. And the social, case also, if somebody, um, we all know that there are ups and downs, you can today be in bad conditions or in a bad situation. So if people come and support you, uh, really tomorrow, if they are in, you will try to do the same. And it is the same in the classroom. Because when we learn, what we learn in the classroom, this is what we see outside. So. And as far as the teacher association also is concerned, at the same, we have to support each other, uh, one another. So it's about what is also called it, um, the empathy. Yeah, sometimes we lose our family members or we are in difficult situations. People, they try to share with you by wishing this and they support you. Those kind of things are very important. Next slide. So if you look up this, uh, we have two classroom, my classroom here in Senegal and uh, on my right and on my left, it is the classroom of Fuzza in Ethiopia. Uh, this, these pictures show us that working in groups are very important. Because if the kids, they try to work in, in group, they support you. First of all, you show them leadership because there is somebody who is going to lead, somebody who is going to write, and they try to support ideas and try to work. And it makes them uh, a family like uh, 
the same family, and then they can try to support each other. This is why it's uh, important to work like that in the classroom. As teachers, we should try to make groups in order to let our students really work together and perform and try to train themselves. And the next one, uh, in order to work really um, better, it's good for the teachers and for the and for the teachers and for the students um, to base on what we have uh, just suggest, suggested here. As far as the teachers and the students are concerned, they need um, uh, emotional support. We have to support them. And then we have, they need collaboration. If they work like that, they need collaboration because they support each other. They share and the self-control regulation uh, mechanism, I can say, they should try to uh, to give uh, that to themselves control in order to match things. Uh, what is also called empathy, they have to share uh, sorrow and, you know, they support each other. They also have to learn the environment to know really things because the place where we are they should know and protect it is better okay and then, thank you so much thank Tijan. you so I'm much sorry, you're running over time and we've got lots to go through i think people can read your slide yeah. there anyway thank you yeah, so that's... much um our next topic is accountability um i think nonlela are you in the room now finally if not steve's going to play the audio for this one Hello everyone, my name is Nongela Ntimkulu from South Africa. I'm a teacher at Babalok Primary School in Kwarpwa, the eastern part of Free State. I serve under NAYETSA, the teacher association in South Africa. Now, my topic for today will be on accountability, how it fits in our profession as teachers and leaders of Teachers Association. Before we start, I would like to ask you this question. Are you responsible in your learning tasks and home jobs? You can share your answer in the chat board. For myself, I would say yes, I'm responsible because at home, if I have uh, 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 the chores that I need to do, it is my responsibility to ensure that I complete the chores. And at work, it is also my responsibility to administer teaching and learning and attain expected results. I would say for every little task that one does, responsibility lies on that person. Now on the next slide, I would like us to look at the benefits of being accountable. So being accountable encourages performance, meaning that performance, if you have achieved to a certain level, next time you would want to do better, you would want to achieve more. It also allows you to recognize and learn from your mistakes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The learners did not perform well on a test or an activity that they have assigned. As a teacher, you sit down and try to, to, to check or reflect on things that you did not do well, then modify the lessons and check again how the performance would be. It also helped to build trust and collaboration. If there was an activity that, that your teacher association had conducted, if everyone is becoming accountable in that way, it builds trust and also teamwork spirit. Again, accountability helps you to understand the effects of your actions, which would increase learning behavior, personality, and development in turn. Now, on the next slide, I'd like to share with you how do I go about being accountable or how you can go about being accountable. So for me to be accountable, I should set specific goals that are measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. For an example, if the performance of my learners in the current term is at 50%, I could not say in the next term, which is term two, I need to attain 100%. I should be realistic. 
maybe at least set the target at of 70 or 65 to 70 percent so that by next term I would reach the 100 percent meaning I would be taking the the, the, the progress of the, 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 the target that I have set measuring that with the results of my learners number two you need I need to to check the progress and diligence to do more then lastly I must self-reflection, taking what I did well and what I did not do well, try to rectify and improve on things that I did not do well for better results. Now, let's go on the next slide. On the next slide, I want us to look on accountability in teams and organization. Um, let's say your organization or teacher association has an activity or event it wants to, to, to conduct, be it an online training or workshop, or at school there's a, um, you want to engage your learners in a group discussion or class discussion. First, you need to plan for the event. As you plan, there should be a team that will help to plan the event. As you have the team, each person, each person should be assigned a task to do. As a team, you need to meet regularly to check on the progress, plan ahead for unavoidable challenges like having backup, should there be a connectivity challenges, if the activity will be conducted virtually in simple terms. You need to have plan B. Again, as a team, for the success of your event, you need to support one another. On the next slide, I would like us to look on accountability in learning and leadership. One, we should set meaningful goals. By setting meaningful goals, we would have a direction for our our, our learning tasks or rather leadership activities. Also ask for help from the team you work with. Ensure that everyone understands their rules and what is expected of them. Lead by example and take ownership of your own mistake and give rewards for the work well done. Last, I need us to look at on how we can embrace learning and leadership accountability. We can do so by simply promoting accountability through goal setting, time management, and support system. Also by establishing a culture of learning and leadership accountability through clear communication, goal alignment, and leading by example. In closing, learning and leadership accountability go hand in hand to foster growth, development, and achieve higher levels of success. Thank you. Thank you so much in your absence, Nunzella, and thank you for your recording, which made it all go smoothly. Thanks. We're going from South Africa now back to Senegal. Um, Amy, could you unmute for your short presentation on delegation, please? Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, um, I've always been uh, pondering over how to get my learners uh, be better involved in classroom activities in the way that they could develop their leadership skills. Then I discovered delegation. So delegation is a powerful way of enhancing learners' leadership and have them engage in some classroom activities. But also at the same time, delegation is a uh, a leadership skill that can be used in teachers association or association in general if you want to involve all all the people and have them uh, focus on what what people are doing next please okay now uh, what can lead to successful delegation in the english class well, first, uh, the teacher's job is uh, to entrust some tasks to learners. This is very important. 
the fact that you 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 have your your learners take the responsibility to deal with some tasks, this will uh, develop in them uh, something that uh, may lead them to take the teaching and learning process as their ownership, and it is very important. So it will be a great way to help them develop that leadership skill. Then. Uh, what is important again is accountability. So when it's come to accountability, it is very important uh, to have your learners uh, being able to be involved in 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 some 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 task. So uh, with delegation, accountability is is very important. And uh, if you if you deal with that, it is important for the teacher to know his or her students and know how to select those uh, students that can trust some activities. It is very important. Knowing your students um, will help you select the, 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 the very uh, uh, engaged ones uh, so that if you trust them uh, some activities, they will be able to lead the group. So accountability is, is, is very important. Then you have learner's choice. When it comes to delegation also, as a teacher, don't just come and take things by yourself. Give your learners as a, the possibility to choose, for instance, the materials they would work with. You realize that they would love it when, when they have to select their own materials, when they have the choice of choosing things that they will, that will, that they will work with. Uh, and this will be this. This is part of uh, having them have a successful delegation in the English class. Next, please. Now, implementing delegation with some classroom tasks. Well, first, the target. The teacher's job is just to identify the type of activities that can involve learners to work together. Because it is part of leadership to, to work together, to, to develop in, in your learners what we call teamwork. Teamwork is very important. And for the teacher to succeed, it, you, have, uh, you should select the target, the, the best activities that can involve learners. Now, having your student being able to work together is part of and take and have the lead and take the lead to uh, manage the group, take the responsibility also to report in front of the class and then work to the whole class is is also very, very important. Then you have the task. The task, you should select the task with which uh, your learners are motivated first. But at the same time, you have to select those tasks depending on your, your, your learner's ability and capacities. For instance, if you have visual learners or kinesthetic learners, then it is important for you as a teacher to select uh, the different tasks that would take them motivated in the, in the whole process. Then you have responsibility. Learner's responsibility also is very important. Show them that they have the responsibility to tackle things, to deal with things, and and take it in in the whole process, and being able to take the lead and then arrange the the the, the mates around the, the task they are entrusted. But it is part of responsibility also to have them handle things uh, the way they decide to, to, to handle it. Because sometimes as a teacher, you have to negotiate with your learners about the, the different tasks they, they're going to work with. It is very important. Whether you select the task depending on your learner's ability, or also you negotiate with your learners the different tasks you're going to deal with them, and then give them the responsibility, entrust them some, some activities. So, okay, thank you so much, Amy. Um, we need to move on. Um, and I'd like to ask the next three presenters to stick to only five minutes each so that we have time for questions, a few questions at the end. I'm glad to see that people are asking and answering questions in the chat already. 
So thank you, Amy. From Senegal, we're now going to Nigeria, to Abel. Can you unmute and carry on with time management, please? Thank you, everyone. Um, I am Abel. If you can hear me, just type in the chat to assure me that you can hear me clearly. Yeah, yeah it's clear. All right. So um, think about these questions. Um, do you equate or can you equate business with productivity? Or have you ever thought about how um, someone has so much time to carry on too many tasks at the same time? Well, your guess is as good as mine. It's uh, time management. And I'm working on this particular presentation with uh, Kalkidan from Ethiopia. I am from Nigeria, Eltan, which language it has Teachers Association of Nigeria. Next slide, please. Now, um, before you set out to go to class to teach or before your um, teacher association meeting or whatever it is you need to do as a teacher or as a facilitator, there are things you should prepare for um, that meeting with. And one of those, or some of those things are things that we have outlined just in front of you. Uh, first is having a creative material. Your material should be creative enough to guide your learners or the people you are facilitating the event for. Um, it, it helps to make them understand what you are saying easily. And then you must have time considerations. Give realistic timings to everything you want to do. Every component of your presentation should be well-timed so that you can keep track of what you're doing. Like every chess game, anticipate challenges. Things may go wrong, and if they do, uh, figure a way to surmount those challenges. It's better to be prepared uh, for a challenge before it comes. So these are some things you should do before your lesson. Next slide. Now, while you are in class or while you are at the meeting, there are things you should also look out for. How does structured lesson flow? Or your presentation should have a structured plan. Uh, make sure your transitions are properly rehearsed before you come in so that you don't waste too much time repeating yourself. Now, you've got um, another very interesting thing to think about, which is giving effective instructions. Kind of did much later, we'll talk about instructions and communication. So I will not dwell too much on that. Now, you can see there that um, these are some of my students in Nigeria and then calculated students in uh, Ethiopia um, engaging in active um, tasks in class. It's important to allow your students to work together in class. And this collaborative kind of um, activity would help you save time and then to reduce your teacher talking time. Next slide, please. Now, after your class, there are things you should look out for. Um, ensure that after your lesson, uh, while you are preparing for the next one, ensure that your workspace is not cluttered. Optimize your workspace. Ensure that you do the right things um, by focusing on the task at hand. So have just one thing at a time on your desk. Um, and then effective planning. Ensure that at all times you use um, Google Calendar or any technology that can help you build and use your time wisely. Uh, take active breaks. Those active breaks will help you to get refreshed and ready for the next task. Next, please. Now, here are some tips we have out slide about four to help you uh, manage your time. One, prioritize self-care. Many times teachers go down with stroke and other stress-related illnesses because they do not take time out to rest or relax. Now, always learn to say no. Sometimes you, you just take on activities that are on necessary. Sometimes they are not urgent, they are not important, and you go on doing those kinds of activities. It doesn't help you manage your time wisely. Now, CPD is pro continuous professional development. Many times we waste a lot of time doing things that we do because we do not know. So it will help you as a teacher to invest your time in enhancing your learning and your teaching skills so that you can become a better educator. And then always reflect and evaluate on your activities so that you can always be a responsible teacher Take time out weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually to reflect on your activities so that you can always be a better teacher. 
Next slide, please. All right. All right. So we need you to balance your teaching and ad ad administrative tasks. And the easiest way to do that is to prioritize teaching responsibilities for administrative tasks and ensure that you delegate those non-teaching tasks to colleagues and staff support or anybody or technology will help you manage your time while you focus on the main thing. And at all times, schedule your activities. And of course, cross out any activity that you know uh, you have achieved. And once that you need to do later, please always reschedule. Um, this is my time. And uh, I'll hand you over to the other presenters. If you've got any questions, please leave it in the, in the, the chat box. I will respond to you um, appropriately. Thank you. Thanks, um, Thanks, Abel. So on great timekeeping, um, Abel, as it was on time management. Thank you. Um, do we have Kahinda <laughs> here now? Yeah, um, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so you have That's five awesome. minutes, Kahinde. So over to yes. you for effective communication. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm Kahinde Pedro. I'm presenting the aspect of effective communication. And uh, doing this with me is uh, Nina both from Elta, Nigeria. Yeah, the big question is, look at all we have done here today in this webinar. How would this have been possible if we are not effective communicators? Effective communication is in the heart of every human activities. Our views, our thoughts, grievances, everything is made uh, possible. We can pass our course with communication. How else would we have been able to discuss what we have discussed here today without effective communication. Next slide, please. Yeah, importance of effective communication in the classroom as well in teacher associations. The, the entire gamut of what we call um, um, effective um, leadership, effective leadership, leadership development revolves around building trust, solving problems, running meetings, resolving conflicts, motivating students and colleague teachers. And all this is made possible by effective communication. No effective communication, all this won't be possible. So that tells us how important effective communication could be in our classrooms as well as teacher association. Next slide. Yeah, the, let's narrow this to the classroom, the English language classroom or any other classroom of that. The entire um, activity of teaching or the lesson routine revolves around asking learners to ask questions about, I mean, asking learners to answer questions about previous learning, that is previous um, knowledge or entry behavior, ask them, allowing them to express their previous knowledge and linking it to the present lesson, all this communication. Then the teacher comes out to clearly explain the new concepts, going on to ascertain if students are following, have learned, and of course, evaluation, that is the feedback. Everything boils down to communication. Next slide. Now, in whether in the classroom or in teacher association, clear instruction and feedback are very important. And to achieve this, we've got to set a goal for the class or the association. We've got to choose the most appropriate mode of instruction or communication at every instance. The mode of communication that works in one instance might not be the best for the other. For instance, in the classroom, the teacher can't rely on text, you know, texting to teach in the classroom when it is one on one, when it is face to face, when it is physical. Yeah, no, of course, oral communication, verbal communication becomes handy. So ensure the use of simple and clear language, devoid of ambiguity and superfluousness. The age, of, of participants, learners, or teachers, uh, teachers present should let us know and we should be simple and clear. Then make instructions that are specific and realistic, not very tall uh, instructions, not very shady instructions. Our uh, instructions may be, should be very specific and realistic to carry uh, people along. Then check instructions to be sure that they are understood. Communication happens when there is mutual understanding and so, check and be sure that you understood. Then of course, feedback and follow up. Uh, all this will make clear and good feedback. Now in the activity of man in the classroom or whether it's a situation, 
gossip and grapevine are two things you can't help. When they happen, please acknowledge that there's a grapevine. Use it to your advantage. Don't try to control them. Ensure open communication. Be careful what you say and how you say it. Keep confident. Avoid gossip. Show respect. Mutual respect. And be a good role model. Promote positive environment. All this is made possible by effective communication. Avoiding gossip and grapevine. Next slide. Of course, the social media, we are in the social media age, and this has a whole lot of role to play in effective communication. Of course, in the classroom and in teacher association. How do we manage that? In the outline, for instance, in Nigeria, we post updates frequently to keep members informed in all the media, Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram. We had one yesterday evening. Regular interactive question and answer sections to answer association concerns are placed on those social medium. Uh, media uh, where members are carried along. Useful content to pass information on in an appealing way, uh, equally done on this media. Then create forum for regular discussions through WhatsApp platforms at state and national level. We have state um, uh, WhatsApp platforms and of course national. Post association events, webinar sections and conferences on this media. We use polls, comment sections and surveys to gather feedbacks from members and they are placed on this um, media and people re re reply and respond to them. Celebrate outstanding members and teams to promote sense of recognition. Birthdays are celebrated on these uh, uh, platforms and people get that sense of belonging. Then tag relevant members or partners or influencers to post to further expand our social network. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'll stop. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kehinde. We're moving on to the last pick now. Um, we have five minutes for you. Um, over to Sally. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good, good evening. Salome is my name, and I'm um, presenting this article with Racine Deer from Senegal. And we're talking about conflict resolution. The United Nations agrees that um, conflict resolutions are inherent in any social um, system. So have you had conflict in your classes, in your school, or your TA? Would like to read about some of your experiences in the chat, please. What are conflicts? Conflicts are said to be disagreements or clashes between two or more parties who perceive that they, are, they have incompatible goals, needs, or interests. So the term um, Conflict resolution is inevitable since conflicts are always there. Conflict resolution is defined as um, the process, the deliberate process of identifying the root causes of a conflict and implementing strategies to lessen the negative impacts. Conflict, conflict resolution aims at reaching a peaceful and mutually acceptable needs, uh, peaceful needs of those involved. So since conflicts are inevitable, what techniques can we employ to resolve them? Next slide, please. Um, we, ha we have um, researched a number of um, conflict resolution techniques that we could employ. One of them is mediation. Next slide, please. What is mediation? Mediation is... Um, seen as a common form of conflict resolution, and it is the intervention of an external party in a dispute in order to resolve it. A mediator is an important part of a conflict resolution process because mediation, and this mediator has to be someone who is respected by both parties, who is neutral in the conflict and accessible, and also has the time to be um, involved in resolving this dispute. Conflicts are inevitable in our classrooms, in our teacher associations. I'd like to take the example of something that happened in my school and um, that of Rasin in Senegal. Um, Tina and Betty were classmates who were selected as girls who um, joined a team of cheer girls for a competition. 
On the afternoon after being selected, Betty slapped Tina just because they had disagreed on a um, Bet uh, Tina had disagreed on a sorry, Betty had disagreed with a suggestion Tina had made. Tina returned the slap and then it resulted in a fight. On questioning both girls, I found that Tina had slapped Betty in retaliation because Betty had always assumed that she would not slap her back since she was a senior. Now, both girls were punished and um, they were prevented from taking part in the cheerleading. Now, um, Rasin's case is that of what is common in their school. There is this practice of conducting elections to bring in student leaders annually. Last year, the electoral committee decided to give the election to a girl because she happened to be more eloquent than the boy who had won the election. The students had uh, protested that and had gone on a strike. What about in TAs? Conflicts are also common in TAs. For instance, in my TA, at a time, the chairperson was um, not informed of a national conference being hosted by his chapter in the institution where he teaches. Now, this um, made the chairperson refrain from taking part in any activity in the TA. So activities for that TA were stalled. When uh, this came to the notice of other members, two students or former students of this former this chairperson were invited to mediate in the situation. I think Sally has frozen there. So I'll just move on to her next slide while she's getting her connection back. This is her next slide about the practical skills of um, conflict resolution, which we can teach in class. And here are some of um, Sally's and uh, Sally and Racine's ideas about the sort of things we can do in class uh, to be proactive to help prevent minor conflicts from escalating. Things like in the list here, interactive workshops, role plays, peer mediation, um, getting guest speakers in, um, conflict resolution club they have as well. You can see more information about these ideas in the article. Um, her final slide would have been this one. Um, Conflict resolution is one of the world's most needed skills. And there's a picture here of a conflict resolution club and teacher overseeing role playing. Um, I would like to thank so much all the entrants today who have all worked so hard on their articles for the publication. Here's a QR code for the publication, which you can get now. Um, it's on the English Africa website. Uh, thank you so much, everybody in the group. I'm really proud of all the work you've been doing and your presentations and your articles. And I think we have five minutes now for questions. Over to you, Steve. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks, uh, Linda. Thanks for for all the all the presenters uh, and uh, for sort of uh, so kind, of, kind of sharing some of the some of the work that you've done in pair. I think this is a this is a great um, you know collaboration work. And uh, we would like to maybe have uh, two questions, maybe, but given that we have five, five, five minutes left for anyone who would like to share, uh, uh, ask a question or any comment, please just raise your hand um, and we'll, we'll give you the floor. Otherwise, um, we've got a few questions. Uh, I think one of them, uh, relates to um, uh, how how actually um, I'm I'm not sure Salome is around, but it's about how uh, you resolve conflict conflict in associations in uh, instances where uh, members do not actually attend uh, attend meetings. So I think that's a, that's a, that's 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 one of the you know most difficult questions to that 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 association actually t tend to face is that you know they you invite members uh, at uh, um, at meetings. And uh, you know, gathering, and then you end up not having everyone uh, be there. So, uh, Salome, if you're there, or maybe anyone in the in the group, Salome. Salome. All right, no problem. So, um, I would just pass the 
other question from uh okay we have lamy who just raised their hand so lamy please uh please go ahead Let okay good start. evening everyone good evening good evening everyone good evening yes i'm really impressed with the presentations today i'm calling from mina ninja state so so proud of everyone especially our able mr abel my question is how do you solve conflict between colleagues especially when there's a tax and one person is hanging out thank you thanks so much um now unfortunately salome who has done much of the work you know around uh around conflict resolution is not around um just thinking rasin rasin i think rasin is around rasin would you mind maybe uh um connecting and then maybe answering that question Rasin. Uh, it seems Rasin is also not available to answer the question. Uh, but thanks, thanks um, for for the question. I think it's it's good that to you know to have someone connecting from different different region, uh, and you know following everything that we do. Uh, so I just pass the maybe the floor to Dr. Almaz Baraki. Uh, yes, but my question is usually in the classroom, you might not be able to bring uh, mediators. So how do you, how would you resolve conflict in the classroom? All right, it 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 seems all these questions are basically targeted uh, around conflict, which uh, unfortunately. None of the uh, speakers are uh, on that particular can I just, topic. Can um, wrong? jump in a second on this? Can yeah, I sure. Their, their, their work they've done on conflict resolution. Absolutely. Sorry, the connection for both Racine and Sally is really bad today. Yeah, um, thanks, it, thanks. It, conflict resolution, as they point out in their article, is not an easy area to work on. This is something that needs a lot of training and awareness raising. Um, it's not something that you'll be able to do from one second to the next and just charge in and solve all the conflicts. If it were that easy, we wouldn't have any conflicts in the world, would we? Um, it's a difficult area and we need to start being aware of um, how to solve conflicts of our own and in our teacher associations. And there's lots of ways we can do that. For example, role plays, training, um, being aware of and listening, active listening, that sort of thing. Um, clear, um, effective communication and all of these topics come together like that. And then when we are better at it, then we'll be able to train our learners in similar sort of skills like role plays and um, active listening, same sort of things. So no immediate solution, I'm afraid, but it's something we need to work on. 